Are you looking to get more power on your serve? And one way to do that is to really improve the racket drop. In today's lesson, I'm going to go through the five key things that you need to improve to really get a great racket drop and more power on your serve. Key number one is make sure that you have a continental grip. The continental grip is what's going to allow you to have a, a full range of motion in your swing and develop a full racket drop with the proper movement. If you have a forehand grip, you're much more inclined to lay the racket back into the waiter straight position and this is going to deplete your swing of power and it doesn't allow for the natural racket drop to occur. So I know it's difficult for a lot of you out there that have been playing with a forehand grip and serving with the forehand grip, but the sooner you can replace that with a continental grip the better. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go to a continental grip right away and just cut the chase and go there and just work through it or you can also move incrementally. But make sure that your goal is to get to that continental grip where your hand is literally on top of the racket, your index finger knuckle is on the first bevel to the right of the top, and you can produce a straight line from the shoulder to the tip of the racket. This is a key, okay? Next part of the grip that's so important is the tension, and make sure that you're soft enough so that you can feel the weight of the racket head throughout your serving motion. And for me, what I do, and if for those of you who've seen my videos before here on YouTube, you know that I want to get the left hand involved as much as possible. So when I set up to go into my serve, my left hand is actually really in charge of the weight of the racket. And my right hand is just sitting nice and soft on the handle. So when I go into my routine, I can feel the weight of the racket head. And I'm really establishing the lack of tension right here. And then when I reset my hands, nothing changes in the tension. So that when I enter into the serve, that same tension is right there. Okay. So we really want to focus on having not only the proper grip, but the appropriate tension in the grip. The second key to getting a great racket drop, and this might surprise you, is really entering into the serve and leading with the non-dominant hand. So the old idea, the terminology of down together, up together, isn't going to help you get into a great racket drop. What's going to help you get a great racket drop is getting into the angle where your shoulders are at a 45 degree angle here, and that gets you in a position where you can make a really good racket drop and explosion up to the ball. And the easiest way to get into the 45 degree angle is to, when you enter into the serve, is to lift the left hand first and leave the right hand, for me being a right hander, let it lag behind and raise the left hand, release the ball, and let the racket come up by itself because it will. It will come up by itself as you'll see as we progress through the video. So when you're getting out and working on your serve, do your routine and then come back and then just isolate this and just lift it up. And you'll see that most of the tour players, through this phase of the raising of the arm, the racket's somewhere in here. It's not matching. It's lagging behind. And that'll help you not only get more control over your ball toss, but it's also going to help you get into a much stronger trophy position. And when you're entering into the trophy position and you're leading with the left hand, it's so important that you don't concern yourself with getting the racket behind your head. And you'll see that most players, and they're going to raise that left hand and the racket is going to stay on the right side of the body. The racket's not going to go here. But we see so many club players that feel like they have to get the racket behind them before the ball or when the ball's releasing. They're, they're releasing the ball and the racket's here. And that just takes all the natural energy and flow out of your motion and, and depletes your, your whole motion of power. So it doesn't really work. So if you're in this area here and you let the ball go and your racket's out here to the side, this is ideal. Now we see players like Federer who gets it up here a little bit more. He has a little bit the racket's more above his hand. And we see players like Felix Auger Elimacin whose racket is a little bit more in this area. Anywhere between here is ideal, but we do not want to put the racket behind our head. That's a big, big no-no. It will really deplete your power in your swing. And the next key to getting a great racket drop when you're in the trophy position is understanding that the non-dominant hand is going to move away first. It is the catalyst that's going to get the shoulders to rotate so the racket can fall and rise by itself. A lot of coaches out there are saying, keep the arm up, keep the arm up, but that's actually a false statement. The left arm is going to reach and stretch to set you up, but it has to move away first so that it's underneath when you make contact. So they can really be the catalyst that creates this shoulder over shoulder action that we see all the high performance players serving with. The left hand is a key component to that. The blend of the left hand pulling away and the legs driving and pushing will naturally allow the racket to fall and rise by itself. And your racket drop will fall through the range of motion that your physicality allows it to. Your range of motion is going to be different than mine, and mine's going to be different 
than Roger Federer's. Everyone's different. Some players have more, a deeper racket drop because they just simply have more mobility, like Novak Djokovic. Roger Federer doesn't really have that deep of a racket drop, but he's got a very, very efficient, well-coordinated, well-sequenced motion, so he generates tremendous power. So don't worry about trying to make the racket drop. Let the left hand lead and your racket drop will happen naturally. So one of the issues and things we see commonly with club level players is the intent to get the racket back here as they're about to swing. And you can see now that the racket is on the left side of my body. We call that breaking the plane in the coaching world. And what that means is that I went into my swing, I've entered into my swing before my left hand pulled away. And you can clearly see that I've lost this whipping effect that I want to get in my swing where the swing is actually lagging behind the body and then catching up to the body to generate the power. So again, try to make sure that you keep that racket outside, make sure the left hand pulls from here and the racket will fall and rise by itself and it really will never go behind you before your body has rotated up and into the ball. And that's gonna allow you to have a very, very natural and fluid swing. And the final key is to try to not make a racket drop. Let the racket drop happen naturally. Work on the, the sequence of movements and the positions and the sequence of movements that allow the racket head to drop and flow naturally. Players that fi are fixated on making a racket drop are the players who are trying to put the racket down and they're interfering with the natural flow of the movement, much like throwing a ball. So when you throw a ball, you don't sit there and think and stop the hand from moving. And when you serve, it's exactly the same thing. You place the ball, you throw the racket through. So try not to make a racket drop and you will actually end up with a better racket drop than you would if you tried. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Please take these concepts of the court and work on them to develop your racket drop and really make it feel like a natural movement. Please give us a like, comment down below, and, and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. And if you're looking to dive deeper into developing your serve, click on the link in the description down below and gain access to my principles, my mini course on the serve that will teach you the principles that you need to develop to master your serve. Thanks again for watching today's lesson and we'll see you in the next video.